Another thing. During a mission, you can assume what we'll call the snake formation. Same as your code name, but probably not standard operating procedure for a guy who specializes in going solo. Damn right. There's only room for one snake. In co-ops, though, it's a highly effective formation. The signal for snake formation is to tap your teammate on the shoulder. Hmm. Can't form up until you're close enough to reach out and touch someone. Entering snake formation is called going snake in. When you're snake in, the soldier at the front of the line controls movement. The soldiers in back focus on scouting and attack. Just because your heart stops doesn't mean you're dead immediately. Right. The heart just circulates blood through the body. But stopping it does cut oxygen supply to the brain. You'll be dead soon after. Which is why we have CPR. Let's say your heart does stop. If someone performs CPR before your brain cells die, you can recover. In co-ops, when the life gauge drops to zero, it means you're in a near-death state. You won't be able to move or anything else. Performing CPR on near-death teammates can bring them back into action. Of course, performing CPR in the middle of battle isn't exactly safe. You're leaving yourself exposed. Even so, in co-ops, you and your teammates are all in the same boat. Don't think you can get away with leaving one of them behind. I wouldn't think of it. And I'd expect them to do the same for me. If you let all your teammates die during a mission, there'll be nobody left to save you. And then, it's game over. Building trust with your teammates is essential to success in co-ops. That goes without saying. I'm not gonna let somebody I can't trust cover my ass. The measure of that trust is called camaraderie. Think of it as an indicator of how strong your bond is with your co-op's teammates. The friendlier you act toward them, the greater your camaraderie. Give me an example. Your camaraderie will be higher if you're co-op in than standing apart. Saving a teammate's life with CPR also strengthens your bonds with them. Things like hitting a teammate with friendly fire will cause your camaraderie to go down. Hmm. Makes sense. Camaraderie carries over from mission to mission. The next time you go co-ops in with the same guy, you'll start off strong. But be careful. If you keep taking new people with you on missions, your camaraderie with past teammates eventually reverts back to its original level. Got it. I'll have to make sure to renew old friendships once in a while. The performance benefits gained from Snake Sync in co-ops depend on your camaraderie. It's always best to keep things cool with your teammates. Stand still when you're snake in, and you and your teammates will start to get in sync. In sync? That's right. Stay still together and you'll enter snake sync mode. The synergy will give you a boost in performance. You'll move faster, recover faster, and have better camouflage. In other words, we're at our best when we're in the same groove. You got it. If you've got a big task ahead, can't hurt to take some time to get in sync. Like I said before, the benefits you get from Snake Sync depend on your camaraderie. I hear ya. It's a lot easier knowing you've got someone you know and trust covering your back. Let's you focus that much more on what you have to do. If camaraderie represents how much your teammates trust you, then heroism shows how high your reputation is. Heroism? That's right, heroism. Your reputation affects your ability to recruit new members to MSF. With higher heroism, it won't take as long to convince guys to join our cause and send them back by Fulton Recovery. Ugh, so, how do I get this heroism thing to go up? Lots of ways. Complete tough missions, avoid unnecessary bloodshed, and don't get caught by the enemy like a deer in headlights, or you'll never be heroic. Also, getting out there and attacking the enemy in co-ops will boost your reputation among your teammates. Of course, it'll get the enemy gunning right for you, too. But don't sweat it. Be yourself. Be the boss. From where I'm standing, you're plenty heroic already. Knock it off. Seems the R&D team's been busy working on co-ops only weapons. Co-ops only? Like a gun with extreme firepower, but only when two people fire it at once. I hear it's still in the concept stage. Uh, I know some rocket launchers need two people to operate, but a co-op's only weapon. 
Hey, if they come up with something good, you'll have that much more reason to go co-ops. Why don't you check in and see how they're doing every once in a while? In co-ops, maintaining close communications with your teammates is crucial. Absolutely. Losing track of each other on the battlefield is a good way for a unit to get itself wiped out. Enemy positions, orders, distress calls. When communications break down, you get picked off one by one. Now about co-ops comms. Co-ops comms? It's a radio system for communicating with co-ops teammates. First press the start button to open the menu. Then select co-ops comms. After that, press one button to choose a category, then another button to select the actual message. So basically, you use different combinations of two buttons to send different messages. <laughs> Easy enough. You can set which messages go with which buttons during mission prep. Uh, sounds like it's going to be a pain to send messages until I get used to it. Then why don't you assign co-op's comms to the select button? That should make things a little quicker and easier. Just go to Select button under Options. I'll give it a try. Snake, you familiar with the Japanese word Kotodama? Mm hmm Kotodama. Unfortunately, there's no direct equivalent in English. But to keep it simple, let's call it a sort of battle cry. Battle cry, huh? Right. But Kotodama is actually a deep Japanese concept. Koto means word, and Dama means spirit. It signifies that words have power that affect our reality. <laughs> Are you feeling okay? I guess I made it sound kind of like mumbo-jumbo, huh? <laughs> Seriously, though, haven't you ever felt energized when a teammate cheered you on? Or the other way around? Ever had your legs cut out from under you by a thoughtless remark? Yeah, I know the feeling. Words can have a powerful mental effect on people. Same goes for co-op's comps. Offering praise to somebody could make them run faster than usual. Or make somebody who thinks they're done for get up and fight again. See what I'm saying? I get the picture. So it works in reverse, too. The powers of words are many and varied. Try using them for yourself. Snake. About that cassette player Galvez was carrying. What about it? That was no Russian imitation. It was the real deal. A prototype developed by a Japanese company. Get out of here. It's true. It had the Sony logo on it. The product name is Walkman. Walkman. It's a revolutionary new concept. Music you can listen to on the go. You can take it with you when you leave the house. I gave it a listen. And you wouldn't believe how good the sound quality is for something so tiny. And in stereo, too. Think of the technology that must have gone into it. And that tape is equally amazing. The treble range is clearly superior to any other cassette ever made. Stylish, too. How'd Galvez get his hands on a model that's not even out yet? Beats me. It's not the kind of thing I'd expect some stodgy Soviet to be into. Mm, me neither. Tell you what, though. It's a fine piece of work. It'll let me listen to my music when I want. Where I want. I never thought I'd hear you say that, but I have to agree. Me? I'm a recording freak, and I always used to laugh at the idea of a portable player. But now that I've seen it in action, I've changed my mind. Being able to take your music with you, this could be the start of a revolution in music. Could be. I'm having the guys at Mother Base study and analyze it. Who knows? They might be able to come up with something even better. Amanda and her crew tell me they've managed to identify several different categories of mercenaries employed by the CIA. Give me a rundown. Sounds like info I could use. No problem. I'll go through them in order. The type of enemy you'll be seeing most is the type that patrols and guards a specific operational area. For the sake of convenience, Amanda's crew calls the outdoor ones patrolmen and the indoor ones guards. They might look like they're just out for a stroll, but don't be fooled. They're sharper than they look. All of their senses are finely honed. Normally, they'll patrol along fixed routes, but when the alert level is raised, they'll assume a more efficient alert posture and focus on defending specific points. That's bad for you. Obviously, they can hold their own in combat, 
And with body armor, it'll be even harder to take them down. If they're wearing a bulletproof helmet, you can forget about one-shot kills. Just a heads up. You'll need to be smart about using camo and pick your routes. The most important thing is to avoid detection. When the enemy... There are areas out there where enemy soldiers are deployed in multiple layers for extra coverage. More than a few of those will be attacking you from a distance, rooftops and far off vantage points. Try not to get too distracted by nearby enemies, because you could be leaving yourself wide open to longer range attacks. I'll be careful. We know there are variations in the kinds of gear patrolmen and commandos wear, especially the body armor. Our scouts report that an enemy's defense and firing accuracy are directly proportional to how heavy their gear is. Hmm. Those must be the guys with the highest combat skills. They can fight in heavier gear without their performance suffering. Supposedly, it's pretty easy to tell the difference in gear just by looking. So remember, use extra caution when dealing with enemies wearing heavy gear. Enemies will try to fight you from different distances based on the weapon they've got equipped. When you meet an enemy, get a good look at what they're carrying. It can make or break your chances in battle. Enemies carrying handguns and shotguns will try and get in close. That makes them dangerous, but at the same time, easier to hit. Keep your wits about you, and you can turn a threat into an opportunity. Enemies carrying assault rifles and machine guns will usually fire at you from farther away. Use whatever cover you can find, then return fire with a few well-placed shots of your own. Don't expect enemies carrying sniper rifles or rocket launchers to get up close and personal. They'll be constantly moving from place to place looking for an opening to snipe at you. Tricky bastards. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Go with the sniper rifle. Make sure you stay out of their line of sight, and when they expose themselves, take them down. The new plan is a hex type. That gives it more surface area than previous types, and also makes it easier to plan expansions. We're gonna make this place huge. Hex, huh? Like a beehive. Nothing wrong with that. They say the honeycomb design is one of the strongest. I hear they're even thinking of using it in tank armor. Good enough for me. I'll see about finding us some worker bees. Appreciate it, boss. By the way, Kaz, who do you think's our queen bee? Good question. I was thinking maybe Poss. Hmm. I was thinking Strangelove. Well, I can see that. Or maybe Cecile. On second thought, I might go with Amanda. How about this snake? We'll have an army of queen bees. Sure. Why not? Remember why we created MSF Snake. To provide military force to whoever needs it, wherever they are, regardless of nation or ideology. Our beliefs aren't all that lofty. We just won't be the tools of any one country. Exactly. We know only how to fight. But we refuse to live our lives at the whim of the state. The MSF seal is patterned after Pangaea, the supercontinent from 250 million years ago. Back then, the whole world was one landmass, one world. No gaps, no rifts. Our strength will take us back there. 